Have you seen the the new? I only say this because I saw it, not because I went out of my way to see it. What? We saw uh, West Side Story How last was it? night. How was it? Uh, it was very good. I was I wanted it to be great. No, it wasn't. It was very good. Okay. Um, it has a it has some problems. Yeah. Um, so is the original, like the white people. Yeah. So <laughs> let's. <laughs> it's true. Just. Hey, welcome back to our stupid directory. It's up, Corbin. I'm Rick. Uh, what I was gonna say is uh, the new trailer for Ma Ma Matrix Resurrection. Oh, did that drop? It dropped. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, I didn't avert my eyes while we were in the movie theater. It oh, just really? it played. Was it? it was really great. Yeah, I still need to watch the uh, yeah the second I, and third one. Yeah, I seen the second. And Johnny, I she, we're gonna watch. She has to see. They're all on HBO. You gotta see all three really to to be prepared because I'm sure they're gonna reference all three films. But well, yeah. you for sure need to see the first one, especially now that I've seen where they're going with the trailer on this. Yeah. But you really do before you go see Resurrections. If you haven't seen them, you need to see the they're three major films. And, yeah, and it's also dropping on HBO. But as well. what I'm happy for is obviously yes, I got to see Priyanka's in this one, but. It looks like they've done their best to try and do stuff with visual effects because this is the Matrix yeah. that caused you to go, wow. Oh, there's, really? a, there's a lot of visual effects stuff that's just wow in oh, this cool. trailer, yeah. Looking forward to that. Yep. Okay, um, let's start this off. Congrats to the happy couple. Oh, thank you. We're now married for what? No, uh, we're not, going on a month and a half no, now. Thanks, I'm, Corbin. I'm talking to... That's so sweet of him to talk about our marriage. I'm talking to Katrina Kaif and Vicki Kershaw. Bestie. Uh, <laughs> congratulations. Congratulations. Pictures. Yes, yes. Adorable pictures. So, and Johnny yeah. was just showing that to me in the car. She's like, look, look, yeah. look. Uh, so this is, um, this is one of those tape casts. Oh, Remember, awesome. We've yes. seen a few, but well, Kolki and uh, Kolki Anurag. and Anurag, yeah. So I think some people say this is where they met. This very thing? I could be wrong. This is their Ram Leela? It might be. Wow. You let me know. I don't know. I've just been told. Which I know that's not where they met, but it's where they fell in love. Um, but, so, uh, this is a little interview with them uh, cool. to kind of celebrate their little special day. Happy day. Yeah, Happy which we marriage. weren't invited to. Really. Yeah. I mean, I, I mean, don't think anybody was. Well, you know what? They're, <laughs> they're not our ghosts yet. yet. So, One. they get off yeah. on this. Um, and then, uh, <laughs> I, th I heard it was like this like crazy like security like fortress kind of thing. Like, <laughs> like phones weren't allowed. I'm like, not surprised. <laughs> that happens a lot actually at uh, weddings here for celebrities and even parties. You have to leave your phone at the door with security. It's crazy. Yeah. Anyways, so let's do this. Which is not a bad idea. No, definitely not. Do you know? Hi. This is a great place to um, to meet each other. That's exactly what I was going to say. Did you ever imagine that the first time you're going to sit across each other and talk about each other's lives is going to be recorded? Um, no, I, like I think uh, next time someone uh, asks me that, I will realize it's potentially can be very difficult, but I think it's a good place it's to... Um, shirt? What is it? It's Popeye's <laughs> <and Popeye. laughs> yes, on camera, yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, so should we start? I think so. so should play the... Are you going first? We, I mean, we actually have Should we do it together? Right. Yeah. Oh, okay. Katrina this is Kaif so cute. and Vicky Kosho, welcome to Take Cast. You both had a fascinating journey to start us, and we look forward to discovering the route to your drive and motivation. This is when super he knew cute. He was going to marry her. See if the moment happens where the, the sparks start to fly. Vicky, will you pick the first question? Sure. I will uh, start the family. Your sister Isabel is also joining films. What advice would you give her as learnings from your past mistakes? Mistakes? <laughs> 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 mistakes. Um, so I think what I felt in the beginning that I was trying to do with her was kind of make her do everything that I had done. And I was trying mm -hmm. to kind of advise her almost very similarly into all the things and all the routes that I had kind of taken in my life and thinking that, okay, this is, I don't even think I did it consciously. It just was happening. A similar plan. And then a similar plan yeah. thinking, okay, this is the way, this is the kind of way that I know. And this mm -hmm. is the way that, you know, I think will work for her to be successful. And then now she's been here for about, I think eight or nine months. The best thing I can do for her as a sister is allow her to discover her own voice and allow mm -hmm. her to discover 
who she is rather than trying to make her into you know a person who I think you know works for for this industry or for any any industry. Authenticity is yeah. always what works. Always. She's shooting for a film right now. No, she's um, just about completed a film, and she's oh, um, she's already oh, yeah, she's wow. kind of just about in completion for a film she's done. Wow, so. best wishes to her. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so now I'm picking. Um, He's enamored. For you. The general consensus seems to be that what works in your favor is your boy next door vibe, that you're approachable, reachable, and attainable. But as you become more successful, a really good how do you continue to be these things? <laughs> I guess by not taking success to your head. It's interesting. I've not thought of him as the uh, boy next door. There would be I... a sinking feeling than a feeling that you get comfortable with. <laughs> uh, I, to be very honest, I, I know I've been uh, able to be part of good films and films that have made me reach out to a wider audience. I still go to cafes and malls and restaurants and do the same things that I used to do a year back. So, uh, and it's. And it's also sometimes you have to realize that they, all they want also is just a couple of seconds of from your life. You know, all they ask for is a selfie. All they do is like pay, like a compliment to you. That's all they do. And uh, I guess I guess I'll just lose myself if I lose all those things. You know, just just that that relatability because that also I feel is an asset to me as an actor. Uh, you really need to have uh, people around you who really kind of. Firstly, know you for who you are, not the actor or not the professional side of you, but just who you are, and keep bringing you back to your reality. You know, sometimes it's just my mom, yeah. who's, who's just Brad Pitt says see that. a certain I'll change in the walk keep him grounded. in one fine Once day. And no, she'll just she'll just be playing on a Sudoku <laughs> in the newspaper, and she'll just be looking at me, staring at me, and she'll just be so. ठीक है, star बन गया, and I'll be like. Okay, <laughs> so you know, so I, I just, it's also a lot to do with the people you're surrounded with, and uh, just, just keep, just be focused on your work. That's it. You know, I am the same Vicky Kaushal that I was. It's just okay. They just like me for my performances in the past few films, so they, you know, I'm getting all that love and affection, which I'm very grateful of. But uh, I should just be. I mean, this is the time I know that I. Can't take things for granted. Yeah, you know, that's I the biggest mistake people yeah. do. They yeah. lose focus on what it was that yeah. was working for them. And also, there's this, you know, there's this beautiful poem called "If" by Rudyard Kipling. Success and failure, just the same. Just the same, and just th there's this beautiful. Word. He's called success and failure as imposters, which yeah. is so true. Yeah. Which is so true, you know. And if you learn how to treat both of them the same, that's the trick. So, and I treat. I generally try to do that. Try to treat success or the times when I was generally just knocking around doors and just trying to meet people and asking for work. But aren't those just such great times when you look back at them? Oh, or, or do you find that? It scares that... me. Oh, it does? Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, it makes me value <clears throat> my present even more. Hmm. Uh, because uh, that time, it, actually, it was fun. When That's I was doing that, yeah. yeah. When you're doing that, you're just free. Grind, and yeah, you're just free. You're fearless. You're just like you're you know, fearless because there's nothing to lose. You have nothing, nothing there to do. You know, and you're just you're just doing it for the love of what you want to do. Mm -hmm. And uh, now it just when you look back at it. It's just uh, it just makes you value this time even mm -hmm. more, you know, and that's why you just don't end up taking it for granted. Mm -hmm. I like what you said about your mom. I think she sounds like she's a very wise woman, and she checks you out and says, hmm. "He's like got my eye on I you." Like that's important. She's, she's oh, like, yeah, "Hey, he likes his mom. He references his mom." Okay, point play. Karan Johar recently declared that it's the age of the actor and not the age of the star anymore. You've been a star for more than a decade. It's true. What is your response to that? I think it's always been the age of the actor. I think there is no such thing as a generic star. Mm -hmm. I genuinely feel that. No, I, I don't believe it's possible for any actor in the public persona to sustain for a very long period of time the public's interest unless they have been able to hold them mm -hmm. by the craft that they are doing. Right. Earlier, it's just you and your movies. Mm -hmm. I the think audience she's saying, didn't see you on the no get it off just on Star. They have to have some talent. Cinema. And that was for me the, the majority you feel about of Dwayne Johnson. Um, of for, it's not it's been, been around that, that long. <laughs> <laughs> also, he makes his own stuff. Wait, time. Everyone not supposed you know, to talk. Kind right. of wants to come. They come to the cinema to be engaged or entertained or to be to feel a certain way. 
So if what you're doing is holding them, then that means that they are connecting to something that you're saying. I think the probably the best way for me to put it is beyond the points a little bit like what you said, I don't really take it all too seriously. Right. I don't sit here when open a book and say, okay, now this is the age of the actor and now people are doing these kind of roles and now people are doing these kind of roles and in the last X years, this, this is what I've done and am I more of a popular star or am I more of this? So right. I, don't, I don't bifurcate it like that. Yeah. It's not my job bifurcate. to tell you mm -hmm. what I am. Dissect. It's your I'm job to see me and what, what decide I what I do for you. I, I think that you just can't take all the, the, the responsibility the credit, the pressure, the acknowledgement, and think that it's all us that are doing it. So I don't get too particular into which tag and who's this yeah. star and who's a superstar and at one point you're a superstar and now it's the age of this person and oh my god, what will we do and where will we know? Yeah. Like I don't I don't get into that. I just try and um, I try and remain like I think for you you said it's your family that keep you grounded and you have those people around you who, who tell you that. I try and just keep coming back to where's my center and what's true for me, however that you know, however I find that center for me. Yeah. And see what is exciting to me right. at this point. There was a kind of a phase recently where I realized that in a particular genre I was not happy when I was there anymore. And it was a space that I had done for a long time. Okay. And all of a sudden I just kind of had this 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 um really overwhelming feeling that this particular kind of um, say, uh, you know projection which is required for this genre was not it was not exciting to me anymore mm. and simply as basic as the fact that I've done it I've right. done it now right. so now it's for me what only thing I'm trying to do is look for things that excite me right. after a certain amount of time you've also okay. done and you've seen many of the beats right. you've seen all the beats that are there so now what's gonna challenge you and for me I realized right now I think it's the places where I feel that I'm learning something. Wow. Where I feel that I'm learning something new. Either the director is teaching me, or even if the director is just the person capturing it, it's the people I'm trying to gather around me who are working with me. Yeah. Do they have something I can learn? Can they teach me something new? So that for me is how I've made this chapter in my life exciting for me, is by trying to see where can I change things up, where can I make it new for myself. And if it, I feel if it's new for me and interesting for me, then the audience will continue with you on that journey. How was it for you to kind of gauge that? Because that shift from knocking doors to this literally superstar that you became and just that shift, how was that for you? It's because it was so gradual, I think. It's exactly right. what you said. And there are a lot of people who are in our industry who are my colleagues that came in around the same time right. as me and they came with that one big grand launch film and all the magazines said, you know, next big thing, this thing, and you have those people. But for me, it wasn't like that. It was one small role in a film, then one small thing, then this, then right. that. For me though, I do he remember look like he's the first very time well. that I had gotten like a lot of... Um, That's a joke. You know, you notice that people are speaking a lot of... He look, he's looking into her soul. Something was a film called Nice <laughs> London. That's what he's yes. doing. That was the first time that I think people... I felt that, oh, you know, yes. oh, this, is, this is fun, this is nice. Um, of course, before that, there was some song which was very funny, but it became popular at that time called Just Chill. So yes. that song was popular. You know, what? you talking about your songs reminds me of something. I was in an acting institute, this was back in 2009, mm -hmm. second half of 2009 and one of our exercises was <coughs> to look into the camera mm -hmm. and dance on, as in like we had to express it to the camera mm -hmm. and dance on Teri Or. Look into the camera. And be all Teri Or, Teri Okay, so you're, su you're supposed to take the vibe of the song and the camera's yeah. the girl obviously, yeah. Yeah, it's not the like girl, some so role that's the play. Of the girl, and then okay. you have to act it out. So just you talking about your songs just reminded me of that because I have done that to a camera in that acting institute. Oh, this is really funny. I'm just imagining all these poor students in that camera all following <laughs> yeah. them. And I, what if, what if the, so the guy is obviously portraying Akshay's part and the camera's the girl. No, it was your interpretation or whatever you feel it like. Was your it was your interpretation also, of the song. It was also being this is very interesting. Being just free, just, mm. just, it was like a movement thing. It and was also like a just, movement class. Yeah, just like So basically express. one could say that in a small way I've had a, a, um, a fairly large hand in, in helping you craft your... You could say that, you could say that. 
<laughs> oh no. Okay. Um, they already have a bunch of chemistry. Not pick you. Okay. I'm gonna take a guess and say. Hey Vicky, uh, this is Abhishek. I just want to ask you. Um, very interested to know that as actors, there's always one or several genres that um, that really terrify us, that we feel that we can't do justice to, but still we want to kind of like take it off our bucket list. Keeping in mind the variety of work that you do and you continue to do, I really want to know is, do you have that one genre that really scares you? Mm -hmm. And if it is um, something that really terrifies you, is your approach to it that you want to do it and conquer it, or do you just stay away from it? So as a co-artist and as a, as a big fan of yours, I really want to know what is that you one genre been? that scares you? I'm actually currently shooting for a film which is uh, in the horror genre. Playing a normal... Before this, comedy was guy. the genre that used to really scare me because that, I feel... No, like I wouldn't a, stay away, but that's, that's the one that... that yeah. one. I'm much more so, comfortable in a character. Either you get it right or you're completely off it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he but I was surprised. He mentioned comedy. Horror is, horror? I think, the trickiest genre to play mm -hmm. with. Because... Which, which, which I'm in horror. Mm -hmm. Which I'm learning as I'm shooting for this film. Because... Is it cool? When you're doing an emotional scene or a dramatic scene, you know that you've hit an cool. honest note. Somewhere down the line. In comedy also you feel that. Either you've missed it or you've hit that note. But in horror, you never really, you always play acting. Yeah. You always play acting and you're always imagining. Okay, you know, this is the ghost or this is, this is what we have to imagine and then there's going to be a team of VFX which is actually going to create what you gave that reaction to. And then there's movement and then you have to create your own world. Mm -hmm. And all those elements are coming into play. So, uh, this is something that I was not prepared for. You know, mm -hmm. that, okay, it's always going to be that play act. I'm always going to know that I'm going to give, give this care moment. I'm always going to know that I am walking normally and then there's going to be a sudden mm -hmm. sound in the back to which I have to react, which didn't actually happen, which I have to imagine and take that cue myself and then do that. The effects and you then have also imagine the intensity of it. You know, that could be created later, but that intensity might not match the intensity that I had kept in my head. Mm -hmm. So all of that is a very tricky space. So I, I really want to, would want to explore it soon ahead. You know, not immediately, but soon ahead and then use this experience of mine into that and then take it forward. You know, so I guess it's horror now. Yeah, I do agree that that sounds like the toughest genre ever. That's I'm why gonna pick uh, up Ian McCallum didn't like okay. being Gandalf. He had to do it all alone. Mm. Yeah, in the last so two big. years, you've emerged as a mature and confident individual who can hit it out of the park with a role like Papita Kumari in Zero. What enabled you to reach this place? I think I think what life brings to you, what life throws at you, um, pretty much everything that I imagined could not happen, happened. You know, okay. all the things that you imagined, this should not happen, this should not happen. The things you try and guard and protect and keep. Those were the, all the things that I was trying to focus on so much in protecting and keeping were all the things that disintegrated or, you know, did not work out or went away. And then I think it's that moment where you kind of are faced with everything you feared mm. and you realize that it's not so bad. <laughs> it's like the, it's, it's like... You had overhyped and you overhyped. Yeah, you, I think that's what, that's what fear is, right? Fear is mostly just an illusion. It's never really, unless the actual ghost in your horror film comes in front of you, it's never really that the thing that you fear is that bad. Yeah. Sometimes you, th you don't realize it yeah. at all until later and then you realize before you know it, you, you, you're in this whole kind of structure of something. And um, it's not purely just creative, it's not purely just your work, it's kind of all convoluted. And then when that kind of disintegrates, then you kind of come back to, after the unsettling phase, you come back to a place then again of not of feeling really fearless and not having so many um, kind of rules for yourself and so many things that you're living under. Yeah. And I think with that, um, with that kind of com came for me a new, uh, a kind of a renewed interest and excitement in what I was doing at my work. Because mm. I think for me, I, I went through a phase of, um, I, it's kind of like what you said, where I feel that when you're on set and when you're, when you're working, it takes, it consumes everything of you. I think there's very, very little left for anything and anyone mm. else. And if you don't really have everything to give, then I think you're going to be weak in those, yeah. in, those, in those films or in that period of time. So I think just trying to find 
where is it that you feel that, oh, this is a place where I feel good about myself and I feel good being here. But did that happen while you were playing Babita or did that happen before and then you got into Babita? Mm. That for that particular role, I think Anand Rai was super, for, for Zero, he was always sure he wanted me to do that. Like he came to me about two and a half years before the film started. Wow. And I, as at that point, I was supposed to do both the roles. Oh, okay. It was a double role. And when he came back to me, I was like, Anand, so you took away half my role. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we were like at loggerheads for a while, like, right. you know, in the nicest possible way. I was like, Anand, sir, no, 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 this. And he explained me his vision. He explained to me the way his vision had kind of changed. And of course, I think he's one of the best directors we have. And he was so clear and precise, you know, that he was like, you're going to find it if you just, you know, kind of, if you just <coughs> submit yourself to this process, Surrender you're going to find it. It was a really hard process though because mm. when you're coming on set and mm. you're supposed to be drunk and broken hearted and really distraught at a really low, you're vulnerable, you're at a loss, you feel mm. very unhappy and you you have, you don't have, you know, your self esteem is not on the highest thing and you're drunk and I didn't want that to look fake and you can't really fake that. I mean, it's, it's tough. It's tough if you're just going to completely just be out there to kind of switch it on and off. Right. So. When we used to come on set, there used to be like an hour, an hour and a half that me and Anand sir would just sit and talk. Oh. Sometimes it was about something related to what we were doing. Sometimes it wasn't. But he always knew, you know, that that's the brilliance of a good what director. To touch yeah. He yeah. always knew which road to kind of push me down, like kind of gently, 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 and then kind of just let it, mm. let it play out. The only tough thing was, because of the CG, there mm. was long periods between each shot. So let's say, you know, they're doing, say even from a mid to a profile, sometimes that could be like hours. I think out of everything I've, I've done recently, that was something which really excited me. Like it was, it was really fun to do that. Do you think also because it became like kind of an outlet for you to express what you have inside, to just do it through a character? Because that sometimes happens with me and I really like juice it out because I just have this garb of playing a character, but I really want to like... For me now, I've, I've kind of understood it in a different way now, which perhaps mm -hmm. I kind of had a different way of approaching things earlier. But now I feel that whatever it is, mm -hmm. I may, I personalize it in a very, very real way to me on my right. level. So mm -hmm. it doesn't matter if something is sad, how is it sad to me personally Correct. from that lens. But I also just like the freedom. I like the freedom that he wanted. I like that, that incorrectness of everything. Yeah. I just like that thing of, because also you're drunk, it also just allowed you to kind of just not have to do everything the right way. And that was... Yeah, being perfect. Yeah, that yeah. for me was just the most liberating experience. Yeah. That was the word I was looking for. Yeah. So now I'm going to pick one of He's these for you. Her. This one is industry. Okay. What have you learned about things one shouldn't do? from the artists around you. <laughs> Don't be late. <laughs> That's a great one. Don't tell Shah Rukh Firstly, it's uh, <laughs> taking yourself as an actor too seriously and creating like this atmosphere that, oh my God, there's a serious actor on set who needs like, you know, this mm. kind of this isolated space on set, which actually kind of is a disruption to people around him or her doing their own jobs on set. You know, sometimes, I mean, you also have to take this into consideration that it's not only you who's making this film. It's a team of 200 people yeah. coming together and making this film. Yeah. It could be that light man sitting in that one Very corner at 20 art. feet height in that room. Also, because of worked with amazing actors, Ranbir, Alia, Sanjay Mishraji, <clears throat> and they're so good with their lines, man. They're so good with their lines. I mean, that's what I've realized that the magic that happens that when you're just so prepared with your lines on set, that's amazing. So I guess, yeah, these two that come into my mind right now. What's the question? Things you learned that you should not do? Yeah, should not do. So I shouldn't <laughs> be ill-prepared with my lines when I come oh, on set. Like, like that's that. what I meant. Yeah. But I wouldn't sure, think you that you were ill-prepared. I wouldn't think you've ever come on set without really knowing your script like backwards. People do it. Yeah, but see, as an actor, people what I freaking do, do it. Also, I don't really mug up my lines in terms Name of actors exact will show up and lines. not know their lines. What I do is I try to mug up the thought process of the of the character. What, why is it that he's saying this line and then he shifts to that line? So if I know the thought, I will never forget the line. 
and even if that helps me improvise also because I know I like to know the lines enough so to it not helps have to me think about it say something so you from can my end also. speak as the character if sometimes it's that is not the requirement of the character or not the space that that film is in like for example Razi was not that Razi uh, in terms of that script you had to say exactly the words that were written on the script because anything away from that would just change the sort of that character you know the space of that scene so that's what I realized yeah so I think that now that we um well, I think we got through. We got. We did not too bad. We got through a fair enough amount. This is what's called the end tape. No, I'm we're married. There's um, gonna be like some sort of judgment of what we've <laughs> done, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> you could tell just from the moment like they have a lot of chemistry you, if that is when they first actually met I don't know yeah. if that's actually true um, but it seemed like they didn't know each other well but they you he was he was enamored like you could just by how he's looking yeah. just like on every single word she has to say is uh, it's really cute to see yeah. also I love this format I do too. For, for it's like actors on actors with actors that mm -hmm. that SAG does. It's just even though somebody else is asking the question, you yeah. just get to talk. Get to talk and and talk about experiences and things you've learned, things you haven't learned, and it's always you hear everything. You hear stuff you agree with. You hear stuff you've never thought of. You have stuff you disagree with. It's it's always fun. It's crazy because obviously there's so many different ways to do one job like acting absolutely uh, there's <laughs> there's a daniel day lewis way of doing it which yep. obviously works Does extremely well for, for him. him it doesn't work for everybody but for the i moment, don't i don't comprehend his yeah process at all the way he does it is yeah. extreme i mean Ex it works as extreme as it can be it works but i it's like just like he's talking about like if you if somebody does that and they're not like daniel day lewis you're kind of inhibiting a bunch of other people and what they need to True. do. True. Yeah. Because that can be like an attempt. He makes everybody call him by the character's name. Yeah. He's like people. I remember talking. I don't remember the actor's name, but he was somebody who worked with him in the, in Lincoln. And he was asked, "What was it like working with Daniel Day Lewis?" And he said, "I'm not going to. I don't know because I, <laughs> I never saw Daniel." Yeah. Incredible. I don't know what it's like to work with him because Daniel was never there. Yeah, it's so dangerous because if if it doesn't work, you're just an asshole. Exactly. <laughs> the only reason you can get away with it is because it works. <laughs> it's because it works right for every single time. Yeah, but it's also it's a process I don't I can't comprehend. Like uh, uh, there's there's certain things that they had m mentioned about in regard to there there are certain processes that only work in certain formats mm -hmm. where you know you you you. You know, if you're doing a one-person show mm -hmm. and you're playing multiple characters, especially if they're having dialogue with one another, you have to be able to turn on and off the emotional state of the character in the blink of an eye yeah, and be able to then reconnect with it mm -hmm. and, uh, and be genuine in that process. Yeah. So, and it depends on if you're doing stage, if you're doing film. So, Ed, yeah, we can great. listen to people talk about the yeah, craft. That was great. All day long. And we'd love to talk to them in person and be our dope. Yes. So please come on, guys. Together. Together. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah. We can have a we can we can chat about you know each other. Yeah, um, come here to LA and and we can go on a, a double. What would it be? It's a triple, triple date. Triple date. Go on a triple date. Triple date. Yeah, come on down. Come on, be our dose. Come on, and congratulations. Congratulations. Josh. <laughs>